Greetings. Welcome back to Black Bear News, where we are discussing climate change, abrupt climate change, and things adjacent. Please remember to like the video and to make sure that you are still subscribed. Um, also, uh, don't forget, I'm, st- I'm on rockfin.com, R-O-K-F-I-N. You can find the link in the description box below. Um, I'm starting to post videos on Rockfin. Um, I don't know if it's going to happen this week, but a lot of times I record my videos in advance. I'll do a couple videos and kind of schedule them out through the days. So uh, what I'm going to be doing, or what I did last week, was I'll put the advanced videos on Rockfin. And uh, so the, all those videos will be available to see on Rockfin immediately. Uh, so if you are uh, signed up to Rockfin or if you have the app, you can go and watch all the vid- videos that I upload immediately. Whereas on YouTube, they're kind of scheduled out over a couple of days um, or whatever. Uh, so yeah, please support me on Rockfin. It's kind of a backup channel to YouTube in case something goes south. That's all. Uh, so Australia still suffering from major bushfires, just getting hammered. Uh, this is from two days ago, December 22nd. Uh, the, the headline is, uh, nationwide bushfires block access to nearly a- every major city across Australia. It's from Truth Out. Australia is on fire. The uh, country on Saturday saw delayed flights on the second day of a national state of emergency due to raging bushfires near every major city and choked out smoke conditions. Australian reporter Saffron Howden used a map from the government of Western Australia uh, to show how the blazes have ringed the entire continent. And you can see this here. I'm I'm in the way a little bit. Uh, That's a lot of bushfires. My God, Howden tweeted. The fires in Australia's southwestern state of New South Wales were at catastrophic level At the catastrophic level on Saturday, according to the BBC, these fires are likely to continue to spread well past Christmas, said New South Wales Rural Fire Services Inspector Ben Shepard. Photos uh, shared on social media showed hazy skies around the country. Everything is burning, said one Twitter user. There's a picture here. More of the same tweet. A picture here. Uh, Fires the size of Kansas. Picture taken Thursday on Sydney Harbor. As Common Dreams reported Thursday, Australia has just endured a heat wave that broke records for temperature in consecutive days. I think this is the single loudest alarm bell I've ever heard on global heating, said Keyes van der Luyen, Luyen, a director of the American consultancy firm Navigant. Temperatures dropped on the back of a cooling wind on Saturday, but as The Guardian reported, the wind brings with it further problems. A southerly change swept through at 5 p.m., making the fire even more erratic and changing the fire direction. Around this time, New South Wales authorities began warning of a bushfire-generated th- thunderstorm that had formed over Kurwen and Tianjara fires in the Shoalhaven area on the New South Wales south coast. The fire service said this would lead to increasingly dangerous fire conditions. Such storms known as Pyro CB can produce embers hot enough to spark new fires 30 kilometers from the main fire. While his country was on fire, right-wing climate denying Prime Minister Scott Morrison was on vacation in Hawaii. Uh, They're covering the story I was going to cover, another story I was going to cover. Morrison returned to Australia on Saturday after two firefighters died fighting one of three huge blazes near Sydney. Morrison's absence during the crisis provoked outcry from constituents. One Twitter user posted a picture showing from showing from above the blazes around Sydney as Morrison was arriving in the city reportedly after circling for an hour due to runway closures. Good Lord. That is fairly insane. A map of the shitty, shitty, a map of the city showed only two routes 
out of Sydney due to the fires. Every other road, there are only two routes out of Sydney. Every other road is blocked by fire. Today has been an awful day. New South Wales Rural Fire Services Commissioner Shane Fitzsimmon told reporters, Fitzsimmon added that the fires were largely out of any meaningful control, barring nature taking a hand. We will not get on top of these fires until we get some decent rain. We have said that for weeks and months, said Fitzsimmon. According to Reuters, the Australian Bureau of Meteorology has reported there will be no significant rainfall in the country for at least the next two months. Um, yeah, and let's see. So I, I brought up in last week's headlines something about Trump cutting food stamps to people. Um Just in time for Christmas, uh, the Trump administration has new enacted new rules on SNAP, which is the food stamp um, program here in the U.S., uh, in a move that will knock hundreds of thousands of people off the federal fu- food stamp rolls. This Trump administration on Wednesday formally tightened work requirements for a f- program that helps feed more than 36 million Americans. El- eligibility for food stamps, known as Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program, or SNAP, is based on a formula that takes into consideration family size, citizenship status, household income, and certain expenses. It can apply to individuals as well as families. The new rule, which was finalized by the U.S. Department of Agriculture, restricts states from exempting certain work-eligible adults without dependents from the steady employment requirement in order to receive SNAP benefits. The change which takes effect on April 1st, 2020, does not apply to children and their parents, those over 50, including the elderly, those with a disability or pregnant woman. Well, that's, you know, that's good. They're not kicking children off food stamps, uh, as far as we know. When the rule change was first proposed in February, the USDA estimated that as many as 750,000 people would be dropped from the program it revised that figure on Wednesday to 688,000. Oh, well, that's way better. 700,000 people. Um, but what's up with the work, you know, work eligibility? So if, you, if you're not working, you don't get food. <laughs> How does that make sense? If you're working or looking for work or something, you can get food. But if you... Um, But maybe when you most need it, you won't get food. Is that how that is going? Am I assuming incorrectly? Trump administration proposes cutting 3 million off food food stamp rolls. That's another uh, story. So this program only saves, you know, it saves $5 billion. um, You know, at the cost of people's health or ability to eat. Meanwhile, the um, the military budget went up by uh, $35 billion or something like that. Something incredible. and Something close to $135 billion in just in the last two years. $135 billion. Um, yeah. And I, and I have to add... <laughs> I just do not hear Democrats, the, the Democrats that want to impeach Trump, I don't hear them saying, what, what's up with the food stamps? What about this increase in the military budget? What about, you know, what we're doing to people overseas? What about, um, you know, all the tor- her- tor- uh, horrible, I was trying to say horrible and terrible at the same time, whore terrible. What about the whore terrible things that you're doing to the environment, the gutting of environmental re- regulations, et cetera, et cetera? You know, maybe people are just too numb from the insanity to bring this up, but I just don't see, you know, um, as other progressive pundits have brought up, you know, the Democrats want to impeach Trump over, you know, abusing his power in the, this case of the Ukraine, but they don't want to oppose him uh, about any of his other policies because it actually implicates them as well. This is not an opportunity for me to just bash Democrats, but I'm just saying the Repu- the Republicans and the Trump administration are incredibly corrupt and incredibly nasty. Um, 
And unfortunately, we don't have much of an opposition party as far as the Democrats go in really, you know, holding Trump accountable or trying to stop all of this stuff. They're just like, okay, here you go, but, you know, must impeach. Um, I don't know. Perhaps the Democrats should build, you know, an, an actual opposition party, an actual party that uh, helps people out and does not kowtow to the business interests that many of them are all beholden to. <laughs> um, lastly, in this video, I think I got this from Cornholio. This is a timely article about how to fend off your conspiracy-obsessed relatives during the holiday season. I might be one of those relatives. So. <laughs> but maybe this will be good for a laugh. Who knows? When Uncle Ted has a few drinks and starts screaming that the world is flat, have a few tactics ready to counter his bizarre rant rants. Um, this could be your climate is always changing relative or, you know, Trump has really helped the economy relative. Um, Trump is bringing back jobs relative, you know, all of this. Uh, perhaps in past years you've argued politics over the dinner table, but thanks to our internet echo chambers, things may now get even weirder. You could find yourself not just arguing over Donald Trump's impeachment, but also over whether the president and Robert M Mueller were secretly teaming up to expose Tom, H Tom Hanks as a cannibal, or whether the Federal Reserve exists because J.P. Morgan sank the Titanic, or whether Meghan Markle, Markle is a robot. All of these are true, but no, I'm just kidding. Uh, so what do you do if, after a few drinks, Uncle Ted starts screaming that the world is flat? We offer a few handy strategies. Uh, fire back with an even weirder theory of your own. When Ted claims that Ruth Bader Ginsburg is dead and the person posing as the beloved Supreme Court justice is actually a body double, nod vigorously. Then, slowly pulling a tinfoil hat from your pocket, reveal that it all goes further. The body double is actually Tupac, <laughs> who embraced the moniker Notorious RBG as a peace offering to his formal rival. No, none of this came as a surprise to you, of course, because everyone involved was a known lizard person, which, if you think about it, explains how aliens from Roswell killed JFK and faked the moon landing. Keep pushing until your uncle excuses himself in a moment of deep self-reflection. Tell him what he's, he's saying must be true. This is just going to get weirder, I'm sure. Tell him what he's saying must be true because you heard it first from Hillary Clinton. <laughs> the former Secretary of State is, in, is the Rome of conspiracy theories. All, leads, all roads lead to her. Convince your relative. Clinton believes his bonkers claim, and he'll begin to question everything he knows. That's actually pretty brilliant. Uh, begin dispensing cryptic messages yourself. Set up an online account under a pseudonym and begin issuing a slow drip of accurate messages to distract the conspiracy-minded from their favorite nonsense. Post weekly on an obscure subreddit telling seemingly innocuous personal stories with the third letter of each word in bold. Taken together, these letters spell out the text of articles from Snopes.com. Anything so secretive must be accurate. Then tip off your relative to the new mysterious account you've been following. I think they're referencing Q. Looking around furtively, inform him the conspiracy theory is exactly what the government wants him to believe. In fact, you had... Wow. Wow, that's awesome. Looking around furtively, inform him the conspiracy theory is exactly what the government wants him to believe, which... So right there, that was, that was a pretty amazing little Jedi mind trick there in this article because... <laughs> The government actually does uh, want you to believe certain certain theories that are conspiracies. Uh, this one file under true. In fact, you had to believe uh, you had believed it for ages until QAnon himself DM'd you with the shocking truth. The deep state has been feeding us falsehoods about the Democratic servers. Wow! In in UK and hurricanes hitting Alabama in order to distract from their real dastardly deeds. Fortunately, if he wants the actual story, there's a cabal of truth tellers who publish facts online they'll even write down the facts roll them up and leave them in his driveway every morning for a small fee if all else fails descend very gradually under the table each time your uncle drives home a new indisputable fact proving that paul mccartney's been dead since sergeant pepper sl slump a bit further down in your chair if you do it slowly enough he'll be too wrapped up in feeding you the red pill to notice you're shrinking once your head is fully under the table make a break for the kitchen and never return 
Of course, there's a small chance none of this will work, and you'll need to resort to better research research tactics, tactics which I actually uh, actually support. Experts say the best approach is a gentle one, and you probably won't change anyone's mind in one night. Listen to your relative rather than relegating her to pariah status and ideally come equipped with accurate information rather than just telling her she's wrong. The cognitive scientist Nadia Brashier tells PBS. So let's read that again because this is important information here. Um, because so, you know, the, the, com- the common tactic of um, most liberal media um, or even, even right-wing media is to call anything that they don't agree with a conspiracy theory, right? So anything the other side is saying is true, it's a conspiracy theory and therefore it's totally wrong. You reject that person and reject what they're saying. So here's a better way to deal with conspiracy theories and or figure out which ones are true and which ones are false. Experts say the best approach is a gentle one. You probably won't change anyone's mind in one night. Listen to your relative rather than relegating her to pariah status. Ideally, come equipped with accurate information rather than just telling her she's wrong. The cognitive scientist Nadia Brashear tells PBS, this is a rule, rules for engagement in any conversation about any topic. How about that? Um, or ask her for, you know, sources and proof. Uh, Mick West, author of Escaping the Rabbit Hole, How to Debunk Conspiracy Theories Using Facts, Logic, and Respect, writes that the goal is to present the conspiracists with information that they are lacking and doing it all in a manner that will encourage them to look at you at what you are presenting without rejecting you as an idiot or a government shill. In other words, when you're explaining to your aunt that Australia does in fact exist, be ready with accurate information about kangaroos and accept that she might not be convinced before dessert. Okay. That was highly informative. I really enjoyed that. How about you guys? Um, that is all I have for this video. I'm going to leave it short. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be back with a video tomorrow, tomorrow being Christmas. So, you know, enjoy your Christmas, everyone. Um, if I do come back, it's going to be with some kind of uh, some kind of surprise specialty some special entertainment but i'm not sure i'm not sure about that yet so i'm just going to tease you with that um thank you so much for your eyes your ears and your conscience if you would like to support this channel you can do so at the links below until next time peace